This is Pub Battles. I'll be describing the battle from the Army and Corps Commander's point of view. Let's begin with turn one. Early morning. Beauregard's plans are, in concert with Albert Sidney Johnston, to cut off the Union line of communications at this point here. Early in the morning, while the Union basks in indecision, Beauregard gets the ball moving. By mid-morning, Heintzelman's Third Corps appears on the flank and crosses the Bull Run. And Johnston confers with Beauregard and sends General Jackson across McLean's Ford. Johnson's troops race forward from Manassas Junction. Beauregard orders his men across the Bull Run. The rest of Beauregard's command falls back. Tyler's in quandary. His forces watching events in the east are reporting large-scale Confederate movements. Meanwhile, along the west, he is supposed to occupy Bull Run and keep the south busy while the flank force attacks. He dithers and holds his place, asking McDowell for advice. Hunter's command is following Heintzman. And here, Jackson calls off his attack as he realizes they're approaching Beauregard's men. <laughs> More command confusion at first bull run. Can you believe it? All right, late morning. Johnston's foot cavalry swings wide around the Union left. McDowell orders Miles to have his men guard the line of communications. Heintzelman brings his corps to bear on the Confederate left. Beauregard presses hard on the Union line. In the west, his troops fall back and try to maintain order. McDowell appeals to Tyler to bring everything to the east. It's late morning. Beauregard charges the Union artillery. And the Union artillery fires triple grape at 10 yards and falls back. Confusion and losses on both sides. While beside them, the Confederate troops are driven back, but with huge losses. The Union line has essentially dissolved. Meanwhile, just after lunch, the rest of Johnson's Corps arrives at Manassas Junction. Meanwhile, word reaches Hunter as he approaches the Mathis pole gate. He must turn 90 degrees and make for the Union eastern flank. Time is critical. Beauregard presses forward on Union line before Johnson has a chance to engage. He has no idea how long his left is going to hold. At the last instant, as if by magic, Runyon's forces show up and occupy positions around the Union line of communications. Heinzelman's troops form up to drive hard on the Confederate line. Miles' 5th Corps moves to save the artillery. Johnson's command begins forming up. In a critical delay, Beauregard has left a unit astride the road, leaving Johnston to wonder where the rest of his command is. In a desperate bid for time, Tyler orders the artillery to hold as he races the rest of the units west as fast as they can. Union artillery loads its grape and fires again. The Southerners are again cut down and fall back in disorder. The line is saved. It's mid-afternoon. Miles' troops support Tyler's artillery and form up the line. Heintzelman's troops make their assault. Johnson's troops drive forward, but he can't figure out where the rest of his corps ended up. The snafu being... Beauregard's units still haven't gotten out of the way. Jeb Stewart's cavalry occupies the heights south of Newmarket. Runyon reinforces his line. 
Hunter wants to race forward and support McDowell, but his troops in column on the road are held up by Confederate infantry. Tyler brings his corps into line as on his right, Sherman attacks the Southern Army. Beauregard's orders finally reach Jones, and he moves out of the way. Now he's desperate to commit them to the fighting. Mid-afternoon, we start with Heinzman's assault. Southern troops fade back into the hills. Johnson's drive. Johnson's men are driven back, but at a cost. Last combat. Holding the Union line of communications right here. Johnson's men are driven back. He desperately is waiting for the rest of his corps to show up. Running orders his men forward. Come on, boys! We got him running! After ordering his line across the Bull Run, Beauregard races west to see what he can do. He orders his artillery to fire on the Union troops. The Union troops fall back into the woods. Seeing his western flank in almost total disarray, there's not much there. He calls for reinforcements. Heinzman orders everyone forward to attack. Johnson is desperate. He knows time is of the essence. He sends troops he has into attack as he sees the rest of his corps coming up the road. And still, the presence of the enemy holds up Hunter's men. Tyler, sensing hesitation in the Confederate forces, orders an all-out attack. It's dinner time. What does the Rock of Bull Run have cooking? Runyon's left flank is driven back at a cost. Inexperienced New Jersey militia run into Jackson's regulars and fade away. It's as if these men were standing like a stone wall. Tyler's attack. Tyler's attack is driven back at a heavy cost. And the remaining detachment simply fades away. A long bull run. Both sides claim victory. A little farther south. The Yankees are driven back. And south of them, the detachment simply falls back. And it's now early evening. Miles orders what's left of his command to attack the Confederate line. Heinzelman orders an all-out attack on the Confederate position. Heinzelman begins rolling up the rest of Beauregard's units. The Confederate cavalry rides off. Beauregard continues falling back. Finally, the road is free. Until, of course, they run into the Union baggage. Hunter admonishes McDowell with warmth. Johnson's Army of the Shenandoah. Though gratified to see the rest of the Army of the Shenandoah finally arriving, it may be too little too late. Runyon races to save the Union line. The last of Miles' men are overwhelmed. Runyon's men attack the Beauregard's men in the flank and send them running. And that was the magic point. At that point, the Army of the Shenandoah broke and ran. Jackson's stone wall, unable to stand alone, faded away. A northern victory, and McDowell, savior of the Republic, drives off the Confederate Army. Good game.